Team pipelines are essentially a way to create multiple different sets of stages to manage different processes all within Biggin. So before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave all those comments, questions, video requests in the comment section down there as we do try to read through each and every one of those. And last but not least, if you find yourself in need of help for your Zoho account, just head over to zanata.com and click on that book a meeting button and we'll be chatting about how we can help in no time. So without any further ado, let's jump right on into the walkthrough. Here we are inside of Zoho Biggin. This is just a fresh demo account. We've got some basic deal stages here to manage our sales pipeline. And so really everything we're gonna be doing today is all within this pipelines module. Of course, in Biggin, you have contacts, you have companies, you've got all of that good stuff, but everything today is gonna to be solely around pipeline management. So inside of Biggin, of course, we have these pipelines and we can move deals through them at our own leisure. We can open up these deals as well, of course, and see more of the specific information, add any custom fields, send emails, take notes, all of those kind of core CRM steps. But Team Pipelines allows us to create multiple different versions of the page that we're looking at right now. And they become a really important part of setting up a big in because they'll also affect the way that your workflows function and the way that really all of your automation will affect the system. So here over on the left, we can see I have this one deal pipeline here for managing our sales. Down below, it will give us the option to create more team pipelines based on some templates. A lot of these templates are really good and they create a nice starting point for us. In our case, we are gonna start from scratch just so I can show you the full process, but definitely keep in mind that these templates are here because for a lot of people, they're gonna be very close to the right process for you. And so it can be a great place to start. But in our case here, let's say that we want to create a second pipeline to manage our onboarding and kind of the beginning of our fulfillment process. So to do that, up here in the top left under create team pipeline, this little plus button, we'll go ahead and create this. Now, there are two different types of team pipelines. There's kind of an overall team pipeline, which is what we are going to use today. And there's a sub pipeline, which is essentially like if you had a process within a process. A good example here is like for companies that do a lot of highly technical work, you might have like path A, where they might not need like a, you know, 3D AutoCAD design. You might have path B where they do. And so you could create a sub pipeline to essentially determine where we're at in the design process within that overall stage of project design. So sub pipelines are very useful, but in our particular case, we're just going to be using a team pipeline here, which is kind of a new, totally different discrete process from our existing sales pipeline. We're gonna create one of these from scratch. We'll call this our onboarding pipeline. Here, we'll just call these deals again because uh, I'm not very creative, but you can create any of your own names that you would like to have here. So in some cases, maybe this is like a job fulfillment, right? And so you wanna rename these to be jobs. That's totally fine. Again, in our case, we're just gonna keep the name as deals. And then down here below, we can determine which type of profiles should have access to view the data in this pipeline, interact with the data here, really just have access to this overall onboarding pipeline. Now, if I go to next, what we're looking at here is essentially the creation of the various stages that are going to go into our pipeline. So up at the top, we've got open stages. These are things where you are in progress. Down here at the bottom, we've got closed stages. So this is essentially where the terminal point of the process occurs. And so here, maybe we've got like a closed one, or in our case, we'll add a new one and say like, onboarding complete would be like our win stage. And I know I'm doing these out of order, but I really just like to highlight the win lose. And maybe we wanna say another new stage for churned during onboarding. Just in case somebody did fall out of the process, we still always wanna have some type of closed loss state in every pipeline. Now, in your case, you might say like, hey, they've signed a contract. There is no churning during onboarding. No worries, you don't have to have a closed loss. It's just a lot of the times it's gonna make sense to have some type of stage that indicates that this did not move forward for whatever reason it may be. And so here we'll go ahead and create some stages and you can do this really easily just by typing in these 
into these stage rows. So maybe we'll have one for beginning the onboarding, doing a discovery meeting, finalizing a project scope, you know, and so on and so forth. Maybe we'll have one for working. And then one for, you know, billing information. Again, these stages are really just going to need to match exactly what your process looks like. I'm just throwing in some example ones here just so that we can kind of move forward. But this is really where a lot of the effort needs to be. And the way that I recommend doing this is throw out the software for a minute, grab a Word doc, grab a Lucid chart, grab a whiteboard, right? And kind of map out what this process looks like visually in a way that's comfortable for you and then translate it back into the software tool. Biggin is pretty flexible, and so it's gonna be able to handle what you need. The trick is just making sure that we're not fitting our process to the software, and instead that we're fitting the software to that particular process. So when we click next here, the last step is going to be the ability to create any fields that we need to have for this particular pipeline. And so, of course, we have all of our default fields, we have some of these unused fields, which are essentially things from the sales pipeline that we may want to add. So something like type, I would definitely want to bring that in, right? Maybe this is like new business versus repeat business, right? So I definitely want to know that when we get into the next step of our pipeline. Things like secondary contacts, right? I definitely need to know those. Almost becomes more important in our particular use case that you know everybody when we get into our onboarding phase rather than just the sales process. Now, if we wanted to create any custom fields that are unique to this pipeline, we can do so up here in the top right and we can give this a name. So let's say we have like a goal completion date and then we can choose from a variety of different field types that match what we're looking to capture. So in our case, we'd be looking for a date and then we can choose if this should just be a date or a date time. Lastly, we can choose if it should or should not be mandatory. So I'll go ahead and save that field. We'll see that it's dropped it into this additional information. And so as you would expect, you could end up having a lot of unique fields that are only really relevant inside of one particular pipeline. I'll show you how to adjust these later as well outside of just when you're creating it because you'll come up with new items all the time that you need to be tracking in order to make sure that you're going to fulfill those obligations to your customers. So now I'll go ahead and click save and we can take a look at what this will look like in the system. Now we can see that I have a sales pipeline. My deal that was already in there is still in that same stage, but now I have an onboarding pipeline and this matches my new set of stages that are unique to this particular process flow. That kind of covers the creation of the pipeline. What I'll also show real quick is just creating one from a template. Again, these are a great starting point. So if I were to create a new pipeline, I can go ahead and grab from any of these templates and it will just launch it directly into my system. So let's say that I wanted a project tracker that was going to come after we finish that onboarding. I can use this template and it'll go ahead and just create that for me directly into the system as a pipeline. So as you can see, in this case, they've actually renamed the deals module into tasks because we may actually have a variety of different tasks that all need to be done and that are going to move through this particular process. To be candid with you, looking at this, I wouldn't recommend doing it quite like this, uh, where you have each of the kind of deal records as a task. But for the purposes of our demo, we can use this just as a point of reference. Now, how does this affect things on the back end? That really becomes the question. So let's say that we want to create an automation here. And a really common automation would be that when this deal goes to closed one, we want to launch something in our onboarding pipeline, right? Because at that point, why would I go in and manually type this stuff in again? I might as well just have the system do that for me. So to do that, we'll take a look at our settings and we'll go into the automation here over on the left. Now we just have this one example automation that comes out of the system by default. One important thing to keep in mind is that there are kind of two types of workflows that you can create. You have these more general workflows where if we go, go ahead and create an example, we'll see that when we create a, a normal workflow, we essentially can choose from the module. 
if we're using the pipelines module, we will need to specify a particular pipeline that this should occur in. So let's say maybe the onboarding pipeline in our case. And here, this is very similar if you've used the CRM to how those workflows function, where we can trigger them on creation or edit of a record or on any particular date field that is in that record. So maybe in this case, we want something like, hey, five days before that goal completion date, if the project is not yet done, so maybe we haven't completed onboarding, then we want to send an email, right? And so these really just read like an if statement, if we're five days before and the onboarding is not complete, let's send an email, let's update a field, let's create a task, you know, whatever it may be that we need to do to make sure that these get done. The other way that these can look is based on a record action. And what you may find is that really the main record action that you want to look at for workflows is when the stage hits a particular option, right? So here we're saying when the stage is updated to onboarding complete, do these set of activities. What I will show you, though, is that for those stage based automations, there is kind of a simpler way by using the stage automation tool. So these are essentially workflows that are just pre-baked to run based on the stage being changed to a new value. Now I'll create a new rule here. We'll choose our pipeline. Now in this case, we're gonna be creating a rule where when we get a closed one sale in the sales pipeline, we are going to automatically create a record in the onboarding pipeline. And so what I'm saying here is, basically trigger this automation when a sales pipeline record hits close one. Now I can click next. Here we can add additional criteria. So maybe if you wanted to say like, if type is new business, then go ahead and do this. If it's repeat business, then we don't need to go through that onboarding process. And so that's really just where it gets into your judgment about if you may need any particular criteria that should control whether or not one of these rules happens to trigger. In our case, we're going to run this in all scenarios when a sales pipeline record is one. And what we're going to do is create what Biggin calls a connected record. And a connected record really just means we're creating a new record in a new pipeline, but we're going to tie it to the old one, right? Because this sale led to this onboarding, led to this project, right? They kind of move through this process flow and we want to make sure that these records are connected to each other to represent that full process. So here, I've set it up to create this record. Now, as we look through the options here, what we're looking at is where all of the data from that previous record should go when we create the new one. And so in our case here, we have a name field and it's saying, hey, we're going to take the deal name from the old name dash sales pipeline. And that will be the name of our onboarding record. But as we look at that, we might go, eh, that's not quite right because we're not in the sales pipeline anymore. And this deal name might contain information that isn't relevant to us. So if we wanted to change this, we can just type pound into this field. That is going to pull down a set of fields from the previous pipeline record and from any of the things that are related to it. So in our case, maybe I actually want to pull like the company name and then say dash onboarding, right? Because that's a more universal way of naming this record. Just in case somebody put like a product name or the closing date or something odd in the sales record, we want to make sure that our onboarding module is really clean. Now, these next options for company name and contact name, we don't need to change. It's just going to pull the same company and the same primary person. We can choose which stage this should enter at when we move into the new pipeline. For us, begin onboarding would be the correct one. We'll pull over the fields like amounts. We'll pull over the closing dates. And this again, really just comes down to how you want to track this. A lot of people are going to say, hey, keep that closing date as the closing date of my previous deal and then create a new date that'll be kind of like my onboarding closing date which maybe we have like a 30-day timeline that we like to get these done in. If we had a type field on that previous record, we could track that. In our case, it's not relevant. So these will be those fields that we want to pull over into our new created record in our onboarding pipeline.
So if I click save, that's actually done. We don't need to write any code to do this, which is really nice. One benefit in Biggin is there are a handful of those little tools that um, kind of eliminate the need for deluge for doing this type of action, where if you were in CRM, for example, and you wanted to have multiple pipelines, and do this same type of flow, you're very likely going to need to write a little bit of deluge code. So let's actually see this thing in action. If we take a look at our onboarding pipeline, like we would expect, we do not have any records in there right now. But if I were to take this uh, you know, yearly subscription and move it over to close one, now when we go into our onboarding pipeline, we should see a record there kind of waiting for us ready to begin that next process. And here it is, we've got our onboarding record. If we open it up, we'll see that it's taken that naming convention. So the company name dash onboarding, it's pulled in the closing date from the previous record. It's set that goal completion date as one month from now. I'm recording this on September 9th. So it's bumped that out to October 9th. And best of all, as we look at our connected records, we can see that that sales pipeline record is right here in the parent record settings. They call this the parent because it's the one that happens first, right? So the sale leads to the onboarding. So the sale would be the parent record. Now, just as you'd expect, if I open up the sales record, now I'll see the onboarding as a child record there. So they kind of tie together back and forth so that um, if you ever need to go back and see any notes or any tasks or anything that was completed on that previous record, it's very easy to do so. And so that will essentially cover it here for our team pipelines overview for Biggin. Uh, This is one of those features that I think really does set Biggin apart. It's a bit of that special sauce, if you will, that makes this application great. So we thought it would be a good thing to cover. If you did find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Um, If it sparks any questions, video requests, or any feedback on how we can do better, leave that in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.